Hey creative, great to see you again. In this video, I'll be sharing what I believe are the top 10 best movie posters of 2023. As a professional key art designer, I am always looking at all kinds of posters. This year, there were some bangers. Of course, this is just my personal opinion, so you may agree or disagree with some of these. But the main thing that I am hoping for you with this video is to leave you feeling inspired and maybe even a little nostalgic for some of these films from 2023. I also want to discuss the important elements that work so well for some of these designs so that we can look at and understand how to incorporate some of these qualities into our own work to make it look more polished and professional. So whether you're a lover of film, a graphic designer looking to break into the entertainment space, or someone who is already working in the industry, let's talk about some killer movie posters. Speaking of a killer movie poster, Totally Killer is a Bloomhouse film that came out on Prime in the fall of this year. And it's basically about a teenager who travels back in time to stop a killer from taking out everyone she loves. Not only is time travel one of my favorite subjects in television and film, but I also really love a good retro poster, so there's that. I like the fact that it's not just retro for the sake of being retro though, but since the main character travels back to the 80s, it's totally justified. Everything from the bright yellows, magentas, and neon colors to the bolts of lightning and brush typefaces really help add to this and make it an attention-grabbing poster. I love the stylization and treatment of the photos here and having half of the killer's mask visible while the other half is kind of in a silhouette creates a really nice solution because it gives you a place to put the quantum drop ride, which is a pretty important part of the story. I also like how the image of the main character doesn't completely cover the mask on the right side. She gets cropped out along the edge of the knife, and this helps to create a more dynamic composition that leads your eye directly to the title. Well done. Now next up on the list we have a poster for The Killer. As cool as Totally Killer is, I don't want to get it confused with another great poster for the Netflix movie The Killer starring Michael Fassbender. I actually watched this one and I did think it was pretty interesting to see a film like this that really didn't have a ton of dialogue. Instead, it focuses on the preparation, the patience of a very disciplined assassin who starts to question himself as the film progresses. I'm a big fan of Michael Fassbender and in this film I don't think they even say his name, but pretty sure he's just a nameless protagonist. Honestly, that kind of makes sense and it adds to the vibe since a killer probably wouldn't run around blabbing and telling everybody their name. But what I love about the poster is the painterly style and the somber, muted color palette. It just fits perfectly with the tone of this film. The key art is super moody, and one of the coolest things about the poster, in my opinion, is the handling of the title treatment itself. It's a simple and clever solution that fits the movie so perfectly, and to me, that's what a successful title treatment should do. The lowercase i is on its side and the dot above the i is replaced by a bullet hole. And because they've used a deep rich black here when there is hardly anything else on the poster using that same color, it really sells the idea that someone has shot through the artwork. Definitely one of my favorites from 2023 that came out towards the end of the year. Next up on the list is They Clone Tyrone. Now the movie was shot over two years ago and it dropped on Netflix sometime over the summer of 2023. This movie was witty, it was funny unexpected, and it had some really great performances by actors John Boyega, Jamie Foxx, and Teona Paris. Without being too spoilery, this film deals with the government conspiracy and clones, but that much seems pretty apparent from the title of the movie. Now, I love how the main key art poster for the film uses these repeating shots of John Boyega to create a semicircle or an arc, and then at the end of that shape, we see the supporting characters all in a bright orange yellow background with a bit of grunge added to it. And the repetition of John Boyega totally makes sense conceptually since the film is all about clones. Now, one of the things I love most about the poster is like the killer, it kind of has a painterly feel to it. I definitely noticed a trend this year with more digitally illustrated and stylized treatments, and I think that'll be here for a while. Now, this one in particular reminds me of like vintage movie posters that you would see from the 70s with films like Foxy Brown or Superfly. The title treatment is also a nice, simple display font with a little bit of a retro feel to it like those posters. And they also released a series of character posters that are definitely worth a look. 
These all had the same or similar kind of grunge backgrounds, but each of the characters are mostly silhouetted except for a pop of color here or there to accentuate or highlight their hair and some of their features. Since we are on the subject of vintage, the next movie poster I love from 2023 is for Ridley Scott's Napoleon starring Joaquin Phoenix. Now, I'm a big fan of Joaquin Phoenix and was kind of surprised to see a movie like this from Ridley Scott, who I mostly remember for movies like Aliens, The Martian, and Blade Runner. The movie obviously focuses on Napoleon Bonaparte as a military commander and emperor who rose to power during the French Revolution. The movie poster really captures the chaotic energy of battle while clearly focusing on Napoleon and much of the surrounding action is kind of blurry and out of focus. Using blur like this is a great way to show motion and energy in a poster, which is then enhanced by these little bits of debris and sparks flying around. There are some other nice details here, like the Italian flags in the background. Even though I'm pretty sure there were several other key battles during the French Revolutionary Wars with countries like Great Britain, Austria, and Russia. But this is one of the reasons why key art and movie posters can be so powerful, because they are telling us so much about the story in a single captured moment. And this poster does that very well while being visually captivating and polished looking. Throw in the fact that the title treatment is a bright pop of red, maybe to symbolize war, and you have a very thoughtfully executed design. Now a quick side note about this poster is that for this movie there were actually two different title treatments where one is this clean, bold, sans serif font, and the other looks more like a signature which also features a red line underneath it with a bit of ink or blood splatter below. Again, it makes sense for a movie about war, and it's definitely done intentionally. I think a lot of times when designing key art for movies or film, it can be tempting to use certain treatments or effects because they look cool, but from a creative standpoint, when it's done with purpose, it shows restraint and a much more sophisticated approach to design. Next up on the list of my top 10 favorite movie posters of 2023 is John Wick 4. Not only was this next one an amazing film, but the posters were so varied and wild that I just had to add them to the list. John Wick 4 is a fun action movie with Keanu Reeves and Bill Skarsgård where it's kind of more of the same where John beats the crap out of bad guys and just takes down a bunch of people as he looks to ultimately defeat the high table. I feel like watching a dapper looking Keanu Reeves just dispatching tons of bad guys is like watching a well choreographed dance. So there are some great scenes with some of the other characters like Kane, Tracker who had the dog, who was a total badass, and of course Sharon and Winston. I love how they have added a character with a dog because it was essentially the death of John's dog Daisy in the first film that sent him down the path for revenge in the first place. The character posters for these movies are also really well done, and I think that's a great example of how important branding is. Using the same placement for the title and release date, but changing the color for each poster is a fun and flexible way to make each poster feel unique. Each character poster has an environment and a color palette that makes sense for the characters. There's some really beautiful retouching and lighting that ties the scene together, and it gives us a little bit of backstory as to who these characters are or where John might encounter them. There are also a bunch of really cool illustrated posters for this film that came out, and some of these you'll notice just say JW or JW4, which again shows how important branding is because people know right away what it means. Next up is Quantum Mania. So this one came out in February 2023 and was probably one of my favorite superhero movies of the year. The posters are just so fun. I feel like the superhero poster definitely is like a genre of its own, right? It's got its own look and feel. And like a lot of comic book movies, there are so many different versions of the key art to look at, including this one that kind of looks like a comic book cover. And I think that's one of the things that really drew my eye to it in the first place. The colors and the lighting on this are just so damn good. And also, the use of scale is so perfect for these characters, and it's a fun visual device to play with anytime that you're creating key art for a movie like this. On top of that, it's Paul Rudd with a cool suit and a helmet on top of a space background with distortion effects. I mean, what's not to love about that? That just makes me happy. This film also has a great series of character posters because like John Wick, the title treatment and copy are all in the same place, but a cool detail that they've added in is also using the same placement of the small characters who look like they are running and escaping the quantum realm. It's a really nice detail. Next up on the list we have Barbie. This one was voted as one of the best movies of the year. 
Now, this is probably one of the best examples that I can think of when it comes to branding for a film. The iconic glossy B is just instantly recognizable and it works by itself or when you have Barbie and Ken interacting with the letter. The title itself feels like a plastic toy, but then you've got some beautiful highlights and details on the letters. The decision to crop it the way they have where parts of the letter are slightly out of the frame also kind of creates some tension and it gives the letter a larger than life feel. This was another one that also had a ton of character poster art where you can see how the similar positioning of elements and color help to create a consistency to the posters that still feels fresh. You can also see how the same sky is used across each of the character posters and they all have that same sticker shape in the middle with the fun glitter texture. I feel like this is a texture that doesn't get used as often as it should, but it's perfect for this. A more recent poster design that dropped is for the new Zack Snyder movie Rebel Moon. My understanding is that it was pitched to George Lucas around 10 years ago as a Star Wars project, but afterwards Snyder changed it and it kind of became its own world. Now, all I know is that the key art is absolutely epic looking. With a cast of really cool looking characters and different empires battling in space, there are a ton of really fun elements to play with and draw from. Now, I know there are a lot of posters out there where we see characters either by themselves or in this like classic V formation, but compositionally it's done right and it still feels really balanced where we can see all of the characters in a beautiful environment. The contrast between the field in the foreground and space in background is a really cool setting for these characters too, and it definitely stands out. The planets, the rings, and the arc around the logo also kind of give this a dynamic swooping feel, which really has a lot of motion and energy to it. I would actually put a poster like this into the superhero bucket with a poster like Quantumania, because it has such a polished and cinematic feel to it, while having to deal with retouching, compositing, and lighting of several characters in a poster as opposed to just one character. So make sure to check out the character posters for this one as well because they are fire. Next up we have Saw. I mean, we all pretty much know what we're getting with Saw movies at this point, and while it may not be my personal favorite genre, the poster for Saw X was designed beautifully. In so many ways this poster is doing a lot all at once. We're seeing the creepy jigsaw face with two colors on a black background, already giving us a lot of contrast and pulling us in. But when we look closer, we have this really detailed and intricate looking design, totally constructed out of limbs, the arms and legs and hands, super creepy. This photo shoot must have been wild. That's all I could think about when I'm looking at this, is trying to capture all of these different poses to use and design this poster. But there are so many hands overlapping in the same direction as the lines of the face, which really just takes it to a whole nother level. This would be a very challenging composite to make, and I can totally appreciate the level of shading that went into creating such a realistic looking poster. In addition to having the buzz saws for eyes, this one just does such a great job of communicating some of the most important elements of the films. And like you've heard me say a few times, that's what a successful piece of key art should do. And if you can do it in a clever way, even better. And lastly, on our list of top 10 movie posters for 2023, we have Scream 6. I can't believe it, but these movies have been going since 1996. I think it's always challenging with movies like this to try and keep sequels feeling different and fresh and like something that people haven't really seen before. Scream 6 actually does a pretty good job of doing that. New York City feels like a character in itself, and in some of the designs I checked out, the city skyline is an important visual that showcases the setting, which is one of the things that differentiates this film from the others. But out of all the Scream 6 posters I came across, my favorite has to be the subway poster. This poster is well executed, super creepy, and it tells the viewer what and where it is, showing Ghostface in the context of a subway car, which, let's face it, can be pretty creepy even when there's no Ghostface. Unless you are photographing a scene like this in camera, it can actually be pretty challenging to build a scene like this in a convincing way. There's a lot of subtle things happening that create the convincing effect of the character being behind the glass at a subway station. Not only are there subtle blur effects with the overlaying of the subway station image, but the edges of Ghostface are also out of focus and blend into the darkness of the subway car. The knife coming up next to the text is an extra detail that helps create hierarchy, and the texture, color, and contrast of the knife matches the subway car perfectly, which was most likely shot somewhere completely different. 
Then you have some nice scratches and grunge on top of the glass in the subway car, which just really gives it that gritty and realistic feel. I actually love how the cropping of the subway door creates a line that leads your eye from the upper left down to the bottom right corner. Definitely a very cool series of posters for sure. And I had to throw this version in here too because I love seeing posters where they just try to cram in as many people as they can. So 12 or 14 people probably. And that definitely takes some time to pull off and to do it well. So this is my list of the top 10 movie posters of 2023. We spanned across all genres and looked at a range of styles and different types of posters. So whether you're creating a piece of key art where you have one person to feature, or if you're doing something where you have to feature 14 people, well, you can apply a lot of the same design principles. Hopefully you can see how from a design and a retouching perspective, some of these posters do have similar qualities. And these are the things that, in my mind at least, we can study, learn from, and use to become better key art designers. So let me know what you all thought of this video and if you enjoyed taking a deeper dive into each of these posters and seeing what makes them great. All right, creative. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in the next one.